Thanks for watching Crokinole Center. We're here in Voorheesville, New York for the 2023 US Open Crokinole Championships. We have an all Canadian semifinal here. Jason Arabialing taking on Paul Brubaker and Ron Langell. The other semifinal between the Tracys against the American team of Jason Malloy and Mike McTagg. Uh, you should be able to find that on the Extra Pint Crokinole Club YouTube channel. There'll be a link in the description, but we will be taking this Canadian semifinal and to decide who has the hammer to start out. Uh, the custom here is to do a volley, so everybody shoots at the exact same time, and whoever's got the closest disc to the middle gets the choice. Langell and Brubaker win that volley, and they will be electing to take the hammer. So the Beerlings, the higher seed coming in, the number one seed after the preliminary round. Shoot first, and Jason Beerling misses long. Langell makes a mistake, peels the board, so open chance for Ray Beerling. He knocks down the first 20 of the match for playing first to nine points in the semifinal. Jason goes right through the house there. Ron Langell takes advantage. Paul Brubaker makes it a 2-20 lead. Jason Beerling still yet to have made an open 20. Ron Langell leaves a chance here. Jason calling for his partner to make a 20, and he does not. So Brubaker and Langell facing three black discs, but up two 20s with the hammer. Pretty good spot. Rubicker tried to squeeze that takeout 20 there, didn't make it, and Jason Beerling now 0 for 4 on open 20s to start out this match. Not a great start. Oh, Ron Langell almost connects on a double takeout 20. Leaves a tough hanger. Ray Beerling can't knock it down, so Beerling's not finding the 20s here. Take out from Brubaker leaves Jason Beerling with nothing much but a, a tough combo touch 20. Doesn't connect. And now Brubaker and Langell in a nice spot. Disc to the outside. Nothing for Ray Beerling to work with. And really won't be much for Jason Beerling to work with once it gets to his shot as well. Tries to roll in, doesn't make the 20 here, so a takeout will clinch two points for, well, I guess loses a, loses a disc off the board. Very slim chance that the Beerlings could tie this. And Ray Beerling knocks down a 20 there, but Brubaker, as long as he doesn't score a 20 for the opposition, they will get the two points here. And uh, Brubaker deciding not to shoot at all. So. Paul and Ron take the first two points. They take it with Hammer. So these two teams are the, the first and fourth seeds that came out of the preliminary round, but at the, the US Open, there's every team makes the playoffs, and there's 32 teams entered. So all 32 went into a large 32-team bracket. So both these teams had to win three elimination games just to get to this point. And now both, I would say, probably uh, feeling that they're facing some pretty stiff competition as we get some uh, interference there. Uh, <laughs> we'll get that uh, camera angle corrected. Jason makes the takeout and gets a nice, uh, well, loses the shooter off the board. Langell makes him pay. Ray Beerling makes the takeout through the pegs there. Brew Baker ensures that there's no easy line in for Jason. Oh, but he almost made the 20 anyway. Instead, set up for Ron Langell, knocks it down, 220 edge. You can hear some chants from the other board as uh, it appears Malloy and McTagg putting some pressure on the Tracys.
Easton Beerling continuing to struggle on the open 20 so far. I don't know if he's made one, to be honest. Nice bounce back attempt there for Ray Beerling. That has left a setup here for Paul Brubaker. And he connects on the 20. Nice follow through chance there for Ray Beerling, but instead leaving another setup. Ron misses on the uh, chance for the for the 20 there, but making the takeout should be all his team needs at this stage. Nice 20 there for Ray Beerling. Keeping his team alive in this round. But a great hide there from Paul Brubaker. Jason Beerling peels. They need a miss from Ron Langell here. They do get one. Really can't make the 20, so take out here for Paul Brubaker. Doesn't get it, but demotes it to the five, and that should be enough. So Brubaker and Langell will be starting out this match with a 4 0 lead. So we get our uh, camera angle corrected for what <laughs> should be hopefully the, the correct angle for the rest of this match. Ray Beerling starts out the third round. Misses on the first open 20. Appears now our old camera angle would have been a little bit better so we could see this shot from Brew Baker here. Doesn't make the 20 and leaves a chance for Jason. See what uh, Landel tries to do here. Probably doesn't want to stay... Well, he could, he could stay out just as fine, but he might try to roll in here. And he rolls all the way across the board, so it gives Brubaker... Ensures that Brubaker won't be hitting any shot behind the pegs. Nice roll there for Ray Beerling. Just what he wanted, although I'm not sure strategically it was the best choice. And Brubaker leaves Jason with nothing to work with here. Even his uh, shot through Hogan's alley is obstructed by his own disc. But enough room. He didn't have to go through Hogan's alley to make the takeout here. And now Langell gets to shoot behind the pegs. And Ray Beerling looks like he just took a shot there by <laughs> uh, just putting his disc in the ditch. So now... Brubaker, all he had to shoot was just that one to the outside, and now there's something sitting in front here for Jason. By Ray not shooting, this has left Jason a chance to come in. Hit a peg on his way in, didn't make the 20. Langell makes a takeout. And he <laughs> realizes he was a little bit lucky getting that takeout, but the result is very good. So Beerling's already down 4 nothing. Don't have the hammer here and in a tough spot. Definitely looking for a response here. Nice placement there for Ray Beerling. That's a pretty good hide. This is a bit risky, I would say, for Brubaker, but looks like both uh, both teammates comfortable with him taking the shot. Doesn't make it, and that was the risk there. He didn't make contact with that black disc, lose both this off the board. Jason Beerling hasn't made an open 20 yet makes it there that is crucial for the Beerlings to finally get into this match they were behind there in the last two shots now they have the edge perhaps they can steal these two points wow huge huge shot there for the Beerlings they want to win this match they got a nice break there those last couple shots really went for them Ray Beerling I would bet he'll try to peel here doesn't peel, actually keeps it on. That, that's good too. That roll leaves uh, Paul Brubaker nothing to work with in terms of generating a 20. Does get to the inside, but has left a touch 20 opportunity here for Jason Beerling.
So he's not going for the touch, going for the takeout, and he gets the 20 to boot. Beerling's two 20s up. Langell's got to come in, and he makes it, putting some pressure on Ray Beerling here. Great shot there from Langell. Beerling leaves it short, but it's in a great spot in between the pegs. Tough for Brubaker to do much here. He tried to stick his shot in front of the pegs. There's an opening here. Jason Beerling should be able to make the takeout. And all that's left for Langell's uh, tough rebound to try to tie this round. Yeah, Langell got the peg he was looking for, but did not make the 20. And the Beerlings now on the board, trailing now 4-2 to two in just a pivotal round there. There was a chance, it looked like, Brubaker and Langell were going to be going up 6 to nothing here in a race to 9. They definitely had a shot for it. Um, but the Beerlings got the break they were looking for, took advantage of the opportunity they got. And now they're in this, finally getting on the board with two points. And they have the hammer coming up here, trying to level it. We open round number four with 20s all the way around the board. Jason Beerling first to miss. Langell makes the touch 20 to go. Ray Beerling keeps his team within one. Oh, and Brubaker gets away with one there. Just <laughs> definitely uh, definitely made a mistake on a shot, but just barely got contact with that black disc. Unfortunately for him, though, it still left a 20 chance, and Jason Beerling takes it, tying up the 20 count. Langell trying to get a bit of a ricochet 20 there. Didn't make it. Jason trying to convince Ray to go for this 20. He did not look like he wanted to do it. He's got to negotiate his own disc. And he does negotiate his own disc, but does not make the 20. Brubaker looking for a follow through. No, loses one of his own discs off the board. Beerlings have the advantage here, but it's a slim advantage. I would say there's chances. There's discs on the board that are in Decent places for Brubaker and Langell to try to score a 20. Nice attempt there. Langell going for the fall through. Just missed to the side of the hole. Looks like the Beerlings were just content with staying to the outside, which Ray Beerling does there. The paths are blocked for uh, Brubaker to make a 20, so they're thinking about just making a double here. Good double. Now, he does lose his shooter off the board, but I think that's okay, because that ensures that, that Jason's going to be shooting to the middle here, so it might give Langell something. Good placement from Beerling, but at least it's something for Langell here. If Brubaker had left that his shooter on the board, it, Langell might not have a chance to, to come into the middle at all here. Langell going for a bit of a rebound, not getting it. So two bit dis on for the Beerlings, but there is a chance here. Langell lining up a uh, ricochet, a chance here for Brubaker. Teams confirming that they're tied up 4 4 in that 20 count. So Brubaker would definitely be going for a ricochet 20 here. Didn't get any movement on it. Just a little bit of movement, but not nearly as much of what he was looking for. Jason rolls in a little bit, but that won't cost him, I don't think. Didn't really give Langell anything much more to work with than what he already had. So Langell again going for a rebound here. Almost made it. 
So now uh, Ray Brailing just needs to touch this yellow disc here. And he makes the takeout to the Beerlings from 4-0 down, have made it 4-4 now. So we got ourselves a match. It was a race to nine, now it's a race to five to see who will play for the title of the U.S. Open Crokino Championship. The Beerlings won the first ever edition of the U.S. Open in uh, 2019. Oh, and Jason Beerling leaves that one well short. Still struggling with the Open 20s is Jason Beerling. When Ron Langell just lips out, leaves a heavy hanger. Ray Beerling doesn't convert, but the, uh, the, uh, the leave is good for his own disc, nowhere near the 20 hole. So yes, uh, to finish that thought, the Beerlings won the first edition of the US Open in 2019. They returned for the second edition after the pandemic in 2022, but they lost in the semifinals to Malloy and McTagg, who are facing off in the semifinals against Jeremy and Reed Tracy. So the Beerlings looking to try to make it back to the finals once more. Paul Brubaker doesn't get that combo 20 to go there. Just a little bit of a raise of what he was looking for, but the line wasn't perfect. Doesn't make the 20. Jason Jason trying to uh, uh, deal with the USA chants that are going on on the other board and considering his own shot, makes the takeout. Brubaker suggesting that Langell go for the uh, go to the far side and try to make the touch 20. Langell not liking it. It's like Langell wanted maybe this bit of a follow through double takeout here possibly. We'll see. Tough to tell. The angles are there but he makes the follow through. I thought maybe he wanted the double takeout as well but uh, he'll take that follow through 20. Very nice shot from Ron Langell. Ray Breeling going for a bit of a combo ricochet himself. Well, hit it well too light. Needed a lot more speed on that one. Langell's thinking that uh, there's a potential double or triple here for Brubaker, and he's convinced enough that he's going to go for it. Got a single takeout and almost scored a black 20 there. I think they get away with that one. So Jason, interesting shot here. He's going to bump up the yellow to try to bump up the black into the 20 hole. Or sorry, maybe just uh, sorry. The angle was not there for to make a twenty uh, to make a black twenty, but he was content with just removing, making sure there was no hanger twenty chance for for Langell. And Langell is comfortable with that as well. Just he just makes a takeout. Rich state chance here for Ray Beerling. Man, he does not get the line he was looking for. Last couple of ricochet chances here for Ray Beerling. The the line or the weight has been not very close to what was needed to make a successful shot. Rue Baker gets away with that takeout. Definitely wanted it to be a little bit cleaner than that, but he, he got it to go. So Beerlings, a couple shots ago, I would say they had some opportunities to score a 20, but right now, three yellow discs on, you'd think there'd be something to work with, but there's really very little. Just a rebound 20 for Jason, but he's not even really looked at it, so it seems like he doesn't want it at all. Jason going for the fall through, got some great speed on it, but uh, not close enough to the 20 hole. Ooh, and Ron Langell has now left an opportunity for Ray Beerling. This is what they've been looking for. Langell not making that takeout and leaving a chance. Ray Beerling, crucial takeout 20, he makes it. So now some pressure on Brubaker. 
I was thinking maybe Brubaker would go for the one on the 15, but he's going to leave it, it looks like, for Langell. Even in the 20 counts for Brubaker and Langell, so they just have to win on the board here. I don't know if I quite like that choice. I mean, Jason Bailey's got a chance to make a double here with those two yellow discs. Could put some pressure on uh, on Brubaker and Langell for their final shot. They could have a tough one to try to win this round. Jason going for a double and to try to roll into the 10 or the 15, it looks like. Doesn't get the double and doesn't quite get the roll either, just into the 10. So that thinks, makes things a little bit easier, I think, for Langell here on his shot. I think he's got to go for this one in the 15 because it's not great for, for Brubaker. Oh, and he makes the 20. Great shot for Ron Langell there. That should make things a lot more comfortable here. Raybring will try to roll in to make it, you know, a little bit tougher on Brubaker. But with a 20 edge, Brubaker doesn't have to do much here. He gets the touch, and that's all that was needed. Brubaker and Landrill are going to win this round and go ahead now 6-4. to four. Again, a race to 9. And Ron Langell starts off round number six, makes a 20. Ray Bierling responds. Brubaker. Jason Bierling first to miss. Tough one here for Langell. Oh, and he was going for the takeout 20. Loses the shooter. Open board now. Ray Bearling, chance to put his team ahead. Makes it. And the leave is really tough now. Paul Brubaker, is, this disc is right on a peg. He's going to come at it from the outside. Try to nudge it off that peg. He does. Langell, chance for the ricochet. Not the right line. Lots of action on it. Ooh, and Ray Bearling going for the follow through there. A little bit surprising. I thought he would just settle for the takeout. Brubaker makes the takeout 20. Jason now switching the angle, coming at it from the right side, makes the open 20. Let's see, it'd be interesting to see if he continues to do that on. Uh, some uh, later open 20 chances. Rubaker and Langell looking for a 20 chance at some point here. Good placement. Ray Beerling leaves this one in, in between the pegs. Paul Brubaker, Brubaker, pretty nice takeout shot there. This one's close to the pegs, but there's enough room for Jason. And he makes a takeout with a little bit of roll. Good shot there. Langell trying to roll in a spot that he gave Brubaker a little bit more angle to work with. And he's successful in that. Ray's going to have to have a pretty nice roll here to make sure Brubaker doesn't have anything. And he has left him an opening right here. Paul Brubaker a chance for the ricochet 20. Oh, and he almost makes it just over top of the hole. As Jason perhaps left a chance here, the Beerling's leaving some chances, I'm sure much more than they would like to. For Langell and Brubaker, if they could make a 20 here, man, that would be nice. And he makes the touch 20, so now pressure on Ray Beerling. Got to respond with an open 20 here. He makes it. That's crucial. That is crucial. So tied up in the 20s, last shot for each team. Paul Brubaker going for the fall through 20 here. Langell confirming fall through 20. That's the attempt. Oh, and he doesn't make it. Lose the shooter. Open board, Jason Beerling. 
sticks to the middle and makes the open 20. We said maybe he would go to the right hand side. Sticks with the middle and we are tied up 6-6. Six, six. Really going down to the wire here in this semifinal. Again, first to nine points. The last three rounds have went the way of the hammer. We'll see if that continues here. Ray Beerling opening with a 20. Brubaker responds. Jason leaning to the right, getting it to go. Langell as well, so all the way back to the start. Ray Beerling makes another. Rude Baker leaves it short. This one's in the wheelhouse for Jason if he wanted the takeout 20, and you could tell he's contemplating it. Goes for it, rolls big. Definitely overhit it, I think, to make sure he didn't leave one next to the 20 hole, but on the rebound, he did anyway. Lanchel converts. Back to Ray Beerling. Another open 20 made by Ray Beerling. He's really catching steam, and Brew Baker. Tough miss there, right through the house. Jason from the right-hand side again gets it to go. And Langell just misses the disc, lips out. Ray knocks down the heavy hanger. So the Beerlings now, 320 edge. Brubaker cuts it to two. Jason again leaning to the right. Misses there, but the leave is good. This round, the Beerlings have looked pretty comfortable. Definitely picking up steam, it seems, late in this match. And Jason confirming that they're leading by two 20s here. Langell's quite good at the uh, the touch 20s from this range, and I would suspect he's going to be going for that here. It's not there for a takeout, but the touch 20 is there, and Langell makes another. Ray Beerling again responds with the open 20. I think that's five open 20s in a row for Ray Beerling in this match right now. So he's really picked it up from some earlier struggles. Langel trying the rebound but not getting the right line. Oh, nice follow through 20 there for Ray Beerling. I was gonna say if he made the takeout, he would clinch a point, but with with the 20, he clinches two points for this round. Final shots, inconsequential. Jason makes a 20 from straight on. Everybody makes a 20 on their final shot. But it will be the Beerlings taking the two points in that round, stealing two points against the Hammer. They lead now eight to six, one point away from winning the semifinal match and advancing to the championship final, the, the 2023 US Open. What a match we've had so far. Really great shooting all around. And we'll see, can Brubaker and Langell extend it? Can they make it 8-8 and force this to one winner take all round? We'll find out here, Paul Brubaker to start out. Brubaker to shoot first. Just misses. Heavy hanger here, Jason Beerling. Doesn't make it, but he leaves the shooter on, fortunately for him. So Landel to shoot across the board. Ooh, and Ray does not like that at all. This is there, Paul Brubaker can score a 20 off this. Oh, he missed it. Not quite sure what he was going there for there. I guess the takeout 20, but he only got a thin slice of it. Loses the shooter off the board. Now there is a chance here. Landold responded to the ricochet 20 and he makes it, that's crucial. Oh, and that one just falls for Ray Beerling. 
it looked like it wasn't going to. It looked like it was going to break his streak of open 20s that he's had going uh, late in this match, but he got it to fall. Nice placement there from Brubaker. But Jason Beerling able to make the takeout, and good placement himself, too. We're in a pretty good spot. We can see kind of the angles that, that Landville is working with, and you can tell this black disc is kind of close to that peg, so tough for the takeout. Brubaker was suggesting for Langell to lean over to his right to make the takeout, but Langell waved it off, going for the bounce back himself. Now, I would say the Beerling's probably feeling pretty good about the placement of these two discs. Brubaker makes the takeout. Oh, and I think this is pretty close to the shot that, that Ron made just a couple shots ago. He made the ricochet 20. Can he do it again? No. Makes the takeout. Rolls all the way across the board. Let's say these... Uh, there's a chance here for ricochet 20 for Paul Brubaker, although that other black disc might, might get in the way. Brubaker able to skirt around it, but not enough for the 20. The Beerlings got three shots they want to try to avoid Brubaker and Langell from scoring a 20 here. If they can do that, they're probably going to win this match. Langell does not have a 20 ricochet here. All he can do is go for a ricochet and try to roll in. Or perhaps roll off a peg and make a 20. That's what uh, Brubaker was lining up there. He almost, I don't think he was going for that, but he almost made the double. And Brubaker, you can just tell he was pointing, he actually, he actually has a, a ricochet chance now that off that, uh, that disc in the five. I bet you that's what he's going to go for, because that one in the ten, there's really no line for him. So we're down to the last shot for each player here. Brubaker and Langell need a 20. Brubaker will lean across, try to take out this five, roll in. Oh, and all the way across the board. So now Jason and Ray talking. If, if Jason leaves a hangar 20 here, he will definitely dread having taken the shot, so he's not going to shoot, it looks like. Yeah, he does not shoot. So Langell, all he can do is shoot across the board here. And if he hits and sticks, Ray Beerling should have an open takeout for the win. He can't peel here either, because peeling is not enough, like tying this round is not enough for, for Brubaker and Langell. Yeah, they're, they're talking about... <laughs> it looked like Brubaker and Landry were going to peel there, which would give the Beerlings the win by default because they only need a tie here to win the match, and it looks like Ray just informed them of that. So the only chance is Langell makes the takeout here, and they hope for a miss, like a complete whiff from Ray. Or, or Ron's now talking about potentially getting some sort of a ricochet and somehow making this one back in the 15. And it wasn't there. And Ray Beerling, open hit for the win. And the Beerlings, after a very, very competitive match, win this semifinal by a score of 10 to 6. They will advance to the finals at the 2023 U.S. Open Crokinole Championship.